Jonas Sykes is nine years old. His parents were killed three years ago in a fire. Oh, he's such a nice boy. Ruthland is five years old. She was left on the doorstep of the Battery Park Orphanage as an infant. Well, I'm sure, sir. Let's do it. Next is Belinda Marshall. She's 14 years old. We need a boy. Boy's too young and scrawny. She's older. She looks like she could handle herself on a farm. I'll look her over past her. See if she might do. Open your mouth. Why? I want to make sure you're healthy. Why you spirited, huh? That's all right. Means you're tough. You'll be a good worker. We'll take her. I'm not going with you. You smell. You probably haven't had a bath for a year. Watch your mouth, girl. Oh, shit. She's incorrigible. He looks healthy enough. We'll take him. He looks like he'll grow into a good farm hand. I didn't the point, Hank. I thought the point was to find homes for these young ones. Anyone else here want him? If he comes with us, he gets a decent home with plenty of good food. And I'll see he comes to church. The choice is yours, Jacob. You don't have to go with him. Would you rather go back to the orphanage? No. All right, then. Sign a paper, Sheriff. Come here, boy. Come on. Let's go. Someone can find room for her. Oh, my house is small. There's barely enough room for me and Maddie. I'm Missy LaHaye. I'm the school teacher here, and I have a little boy. I can't offer you much. No fancy dolls or store bought dresses, but. Come to live with me, I'll treat you kindly. Okay? I'll take that as a yes. Welcome to your new home. She's going to be living with us. For how long? Just tell him old enough to leave. Not a day longer. Let's just say for the foreseeable future. And we'll leave it at that for now. You can put your things over here. Um, I'll make up a bed over here and, and I'll hang some curtains around it for some privacy. I'd rather sleep in the shed. Oh, no. It's too dirty and there's lots of broken down old furniture and stuff. I don't care. I'll fix it up myself. Uh, Maddie, will you go over to Mrs. Hudson's and ask her if we can borrow her spare mattress? Just for a while. Belinda, I would like for you to stay in the house with me and Maddie. Why? Because this is your home now. Belinda, and we're your family. You're not my family. I've got a papa back in New York. He'll be coming for me as soon as he gets a job. I won't be staying here long. So I don't think I will.
This should do for now. At least until it turns cold. Is that your family Bible? Is it something your parents gave you? No. We each got one at the orphanage. Have you read much of it? Maybe we could read a passage tonight after supper. No. What grade are you in, Belinda? No grade. I mean, in New York, what's the last grade that you finished? First. That's as far as you've gotten in school? I had work to do. There was no time for school. Belinda, can you read? What if I can't? Doesn't matter. Don't need to know how to read to sweep a floor, or bake biscuits, or wash clothes. But books open up a whole world to you. They teach you things like how much an African elephant weighs, or how Betsy Ross came to make the first flag. And why would I need to know any of those things? Well, it's not just facts and history. There are stories that touch your heart and make your imagination soar. And books can take you anywhere. You could uh, go to China or be in the court of Queen Elizabeth. I'm going outside. Grandma! Grandpa! Hey! <laughs> hey there! Mama, Papa, this is Belinda. Welcome to the family, Belinda. We hope that you'll come to think of us as your grandparents. I'm not your granddaughter. We're not trying to take the place of your other grandparents. We just think a child can't have too many people who love her. Do you have grandparents back in New York? No, and I don't need none either. Well, I think it's just about time to sit down to supper. Belinda. What? We say grace first. Belinda, do you know what that is? Of course I do. We had to pray over our food at the orphanage. I don't know why. No, it's important. We're very fortunate. A lot of people go hungry. I bet I know that a lot better than you do. Hmm. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for everything that you have given us. Especially for the new member of our family, Belinda. Amen. 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 Let's go. We're gonna go play with the puppies down in the barn. Do you wanna come? No. Well, if you change your mind, oh. you're more than welcome to join us. Uh, you big girl boy. <laughs> I'll beat you to the barn. <laughs> the life of me, I don't know what possessed me to take in that child. I sure didn't need any more responsibility. Then why did you? I didn't intend to. But when I rode past the church that day, something stopped me. And then when I heard Pastor Joe say, Will someone take this child? It, it was as if another voice came out of me saying, I will. Maybe it was another's voice. You think God was speaking through me? I think God knew that Belinda needs you. And maybe for some reason that you don't understand yet, you need her. I think he makes a nice hat. Snowball. <laughs> there you go.
Get over here! You think you can just run away because you don't like your chores? Huh? I can make you work as hard as I want. Run away! Get in! Take it! Get in! Is that one of your favorites, berry pie? Not mine. M my mother's. <laughs> Belinda's gonna bake us some fruit pie. That's nice. What's the matter, Clark? I gotta take care of something for the Fletcher widow. Go back inside, Belinda. What are you gonna do? I have to. I'm coming with you. Let your widow's horse broke loose. He fell in a gully and broke his leg. She asked me to put him down for her. You're gonna shoot an innocent animal? Because it needs doing. Now please, go back inside. What if the horse's leg can be fixed? Shouldn't you at least try? Child, listen to me. I'll check his leg. If I can save his life, I will. But the bone is shattered. Would you rather I leave him out here to be eaten alive by coyotes and wolves? We're here, child. <laughs> 